Hi again, friends of programming in Godot. How does Godot control your game? Although it's a simple principle, I've noticed that many people are confused by it and often ask about the difference between enter tree and ready or process and physics process. So let's try to shed some light on it. Let's go through the fundamental functions that are used in the node processing. As we've mentioned several times before, a game in Godot is composed of scenes, and scenes are created using a tree of nodes that define the logic of our game and everything that should happen in it. But how does Godot know in what order to do things? Let's take a look at the basic functions that every node can use or enhance. So, why do these methods start with an underscore? In many cases, it means that the method is virtual, ready to be overridden in our script because its default implementation does nothing. Nevertheless, we know that the Godot engine will call it according to predefined rules, so we can write all the code we want to be executed at the appropriate place in the overridden methods. In the Godot documentation, such methods are labeled with the keyword virtual. You definitely don't have to remember all the listed virtual functions, because in most cases you can get by with ready and process or physics process, which are also part of the standard template for new scripts. However, it would still be helpful to say a few words about the others. We'll start with the init function, which belongs to the object class from which node inherits. Init acts as a constructor, meaning it is called immediately after we create an instance of the given class or script, for example using the static function new. Personally, I can say that I have never used a constructor in my games because I prefer a different form of initialization. However, there are certainly cases where init can be useful. If you decide to use a constructor and add mandatory parameters to it, you need to be careful to ensure that such a script is instantiated only using the new function. If the constructor is called implicitly, for example through the instantiate function of a relevant scene, Godot will throw an error. When a node is added to the scene tree, it receives the notification enter tree notification and Godot calls the enter tree function. At this point, we are guaranteed that the node has been added to the tree, but it may not be ready for use yet. For that purpose, there is another function ready here, which is called only when all child nodes of our node have been initialized and are ready, and notification ready notification was received. It's important to understand the order in which things happen, so let's demonstrate this with a simple example. We have this simple scene with a root node, a scene and two child nodes, and all these nodes have a script assigned. I also added uh, debug messages that will be printed to the console in all these methods so we can easily track the progress. Let's run the scene here and I will click and end it. Let's take a look at the console. I'll expand it a little bit. As we can see, Godot first called the constructor of all three nodes and subsequently made the enter tree calls. Notice that the order of these calls follows the hierarchy of the node tree we have in our scene. The parent node is inserted into the tree before its child nodes. In contrast, the ready callback is invoked in the opposite order, from bottom to top. Therefore, the entire scene is ready only after all its nodes have been prepared. Let's remember this crucial detail. The last three entries come from the exit tree function. Here it is. 
which was called when we clicked the mouse and the active scene changed to another one. As we can see, even the removal of the nodes from the tree happened from bottom to top, which, among other things, means that if we release a node from memory, ideally using the Q3 function, all its nodes will be also removed. Nodes have the option to override the process state, allowing them to receive a callback on each frame for performing specific tasks. Regular processing, which is controlled by the process function, occurs as frequently as possible and is tied to the frame rate. It receives the time delta in seconds as an argument, indicating the time elapsed since the last frame. On the other hand, Physics processing, managed by the physics process function, occurs a fixed number of time per second, usually 60 times per second by default. This is particularly useful for executing code related to the physics engine. For instance, when you create a new script for a character body 3D node, Godot will automatically offer a template that generates the function physics process with simple code to handle the object movement in the 3D space. OK, let's get back to process. And finally, as I already mentioned, we have the exit tree function, which Godot calls when a node is removed from the tree, often to free up memory after its presence is no longer needed. This callback can be used, for example, to verify that an enemy object has been properly removed after destroying an enemy ship, or when creating additional threats in a script and ensuring their correct termination. Nodes can handle input events as well. If the input function is defined, it will be invoked for each input event received by the program. However, in many cases, this can be excessive so the unhandled input function might be a better choice. It gets called when an input event hasn't been handled by anyone else, typically uh, control nodes in the UI, ensuring that the node only receives the events intended specifically for it. I'll provide an example of handling input events, both as one-time actions in the input function and continuously in the process function. In the first case, we capture a key press that triggers a pause in our game, which we only need to process once. In the second case, here it is, we want to perform actions continuously while holding down a key for shooting, so we call the relevant logic in the process function to repeat it until the key is released. In addition, to the notifications and events I mentioned, there are of course many others that you typically don't need to deal with. However, if you have the need, you can override the notification function in your script to obtain a wealth of information about everything happening with your node. One of my favorite use cases is detecting if the player clicked outside the game window, which would result in losing focus and automatically triggering the pause function. Now, we should understand the basic principles by which the Godot engine controls the flow of our game and how we can influence this control using our code. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer everything I know. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.